section, we're going to talk about controllers. We're going to start off by talking about what the purpose of controllers are. Then we're going to get into some anti-patterns that we want to stay away from in Rails development. And then lastly, how we can start using them to customize our applications. So the first thing, we've already kind of discussed a little bit of what controllers are and what their purposes are. Uh, we have the we have it running right now so uh, if we come to our project and go to our projects page we can see right here that we have all of our projects listed here and then at the home page we have all of them listed here so in the code I'm gonna open up a couple of our controllers so I'm gonna go to our projects controller and you can see uh, in the controller we have all of our different actions so we have everything from our create and update ones uh, all the way uh, to our delete ones now there's a couple other things that are happening here in the controller that you may want to be aware of. Uh, one of which is right here at the very top, you can see that projects controller is a Ruby class. And as a Ruby class, it's also inheriting from application controller. What does that mean? Well, if you've never used object-oriented programming before, that's fine. Uh, what it means is that this projects controller class is going to have and inherit everything inside of this application controller. So what's in the application controller? I'm glad you asked. We pull this up and you can see application controller inherits from action controller base, which uh, is a module inside of Rails that has a bunch of different built-in methods. But what it also means is that you can put all kinds of different uh, things inside of this application controller if you want the other controllers to, uh, to have access to it. So if I put a method in here called def foo that I wanted this method to print out hey from the application controller then each one of the other controllers here, and I'm gonna clean this up just so it's easier to see, uh, the pages controller and the projects controller would now have access to this foo method. So uh, that's just a little, light, just so you kind of have an idea of the hierarchy on how that's set up. So uh, that's the first part of it. In the next part, you can see this before action. And what a before action in, is in Rails is this is something that will run before each one of these methods. And uh, you can see it also has some options where it says before action, set project set project is the method that will get called before each one of these actions so before uh, and it also has the option of saying only these so you can see this list of show edit update and destroy you may notice that index is not in there so set project will not be called on the index method but it will be called before the show method and uh, just to give you an idea of how this works set project is down here at the bottom it's a private method and set project creates an instance variable of project and it finds the project with the parameters that are equal to this ID. So to make it a little bit more simple, we'll just go in the browser and take a look. So for show method, we know this is equal to projects, say one. So uh, let's go here and I'll just click show on any of these. So this one's project six. So what the show method is doing is it looks in the browser URL bar, it gets this request and it says, okay, send me back the project with six in there. Now you may wonder why or how does it even know about this when there aren't actually any actions or any methods inside of this show method. And the reason is because of this before action. So before every one of these items, show, edit, update, and destroy, this set project here on the bottom is getting called and it's saving whatever value, in this case it's six, 
it's running a database query and it's setting this inside of this project instance variable and then each one of the associated views have access to it and you can see this by if you go to projects show you can see that it's the, sh the view is calling this project instance method and that's how it's able to display these values in the browser. So the biggest key to know here, one is this before action makes it possible to not duplicate any code. So that's a reason why. Uh, there didn't used to be this before action uh, set inside of, the, uh, inside of the controller. And what you would see was in each one of these methods, inside of show, you'd see this, inside of edit you'd see this and it would go all the way down for each one of these and so you'd end up with a lot of duplicate code which is really a bad practice for rails projects so that's the way it works and we've already discussed what some of the primary goals for the controller are it really is there to handle data flow and to let the view have access to specific data elements. So in this case for the show page, it has ac gives access to this project instance variable so that it can display these values inside of the uh, inside of the view. If we go and open up the views and go to projects, we can see each one of these items has different calls to a in or to a method so for the index method i'll click on this one and you can see that it's our listing of projects and it calls the projects instance variable which it has access to because we make it possible through this database query right here inside of our index method and it's calling project all and in the next uh, in some of the next videos we'll get in how to customize that but that should give you a good idea of what the purpose of the controller is and uh, some of the different uh, framework items around that